Hey guys, welcome to Bethel Online. My name is Jason, I'm one of the pastors here, and we're so glad you decided to make us a part of your weekend. No matter who you are, where you come from, we're so glad you're here. Our vision is to be a safe place for real people to encounter the real Jesus and experience real change. Our hope and our prayer is that no matter who you are or what you've been through, you know that you are loved and you are wanted here. We would love to get to know you better and help you connect with all that's going on. You can do this by going to our website at www.bethel.us or by downloading the Bethel app. You can find our app by searching Bethel Putco in your app store. Both online and in the app, you can fill out digital connection card. It only takes a minute and it'll help us know how to serve you better. Another way you can connect today is through giving. Your generosity at Bethel directly impacts God's mission to radically change people's lives in Putnam County and beyond. Through the ministries of Bethel and the many local and regional organizations we support, people are able to see the grace of God and how much He loves them. You can always give on our website at Bethel.us forward slash give or in the Bethel app. Thank you for partnering with us and making a difference. Well, thanks again for tuning in online today. Know that you are wanted and welcome here, and you are loved. I hope you all have a great day. Good morning, and welcome to Bethel Online. Today, we're in the second week of a series entitled, Where is God When It Hurts? The reality of life is that if we live this life, there will be pain. We live in a broken world. We have the ability to do broken things that cause us pain, Others have the ability to do broken things that cause us pain. Just simply living life has the possibility of creating painful situations for us. Last week, we talked about what God can do through our pain. I don't know what you're going through, and as much as I would love to fully explain away your pain and give you every point and reason that your pain happened and who caused it, the reality is that that probably still wouldn't address the immediate pain that we experience. Last week, I talked about what God can do through our pain. Today, I want to talk about the steps that we can take to let our pain be for our gain. We often use a phrase in our culture, no pain, no gain. The reality is if your workout doesn't leave you a little sore, it's probably not doing you much good. It's not pushing you and it's not stretching you. And while most of us wouldn't choose to go through pain on an average day, the truth is that it's often through our painful experiences and our survival of them where we gain strength. Today, I want to talk about some of the steps that we can take to help us while we're in pain. In Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 22 and 23, Solomon is looking out at the plight and the struggle of people. And Solomon is looking out, seeing the toil that the people do every day and the painful life circumstances that happen. And he's asking a question that I, I think is a fair question of anyone who witnesses the pain of others. Even with everything at his disposal, King Solomon, one of the wealthiest kings in all of history, with more assets and resources at his hands, even Solomon saw the problem with pain. We want pain to disappear as quickly as possible, but the reality is sometimes we can do nearly everything in our power and fully entrust God to solve the problem immediately, but sometimes the pain persists. Solomon asked this question, what do people get for all their work and struggling here on earth? All of their lives, their work is full of pain and sorrow. And even at night, their minds don't rest. This is also useless. The reality is for many of us, as we grow older in life and, and we begin to mature in life, that maturity often comes at the cost of some pain. There are lessons that we learn during pain that change us forever. We're just simply, when we're young, sometimes we're not aware of the pain that exists. Sometimes we've been spared 
some pains that others are experiencing. But Solomon is pointing out here that the reality of life is that pain exists and sometimes it seems like it's for nothing. But I believe when we entrust God with it and we're willing to take our steps, the steps that we can, God can use it for our gain. Romans chapter 8 verses 28 says this, For we know that everything God works for the glory, for the good of those who love Him. There's an assumption that I'm coming with to you today, and the assumption is that God is good. And if God is good and we have access to God through Jesus and we have the ability to to pray to God, to rely on God, and to count on God, then His goodness isn't changed by our pain. In reality, His goodness becomes a post for us to lean on in our pain. He said, they are the people he called because that was his plan. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 4, Paul asked the question of the people who have been going forth in ministry and experiencing pain. He says, have you gone through all of this for nothing? Is it really all for nothing? Today, I want to talk about five ways that you can benefit from any kind of pain. That if you will take these steps, seek these steps, that you can benefit and gain from the pain you're experiencing. Number one, I can use my pain to draw closer to God in worship. I don't know about you, but uh, when life doesn't go my way, I have the ability to pout. When life doesn't go my way and I'm in pain, my temptation is to push God away. My temptation is to focus on my problem. One thing that one step that we can take in our pain is to draw closer to God in our worship. I'm always reminded when I think about pain and difficulty of a woman in my first church. Her name was Deb. During my time as her pastor over the course of two years, Deb's life was one difficulty, one tragedy, one loss after another. During that same season, I was going through much less than Deb, but all nonetheless a painful time myself. I was struggling with depression and anxiety and feeling like there was no hope for my church to grow. There was no hope. And I was just really down and out. And there were weeks when I just didn't feel like being present in the act of worship at church. And yet, this was a part of my responsibility as a pastor. And I would watch and Deb in her front row with her severely handicapped son and her ailing mother. And I would wonder, how does she worship so wholeheartedly every single Sunday? How did she continue to worship even when the lone sister that she had had passed away and could no longer help her with the unfair load that she had to carry all of the time. But I learned something in those days. People who choose to draw closer to God rather than push Him away often gain in major ways as they worship God. Worshiping God is to make God the focus and center of our life rather than ourselves. We are tempted to focus on the largeness of our pain. Worship draws us to the God who is much larger than our pain. We can choose to use our pain to draw closer to God, where God can comfort and care for us and guide us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8-10, through 10, Paul talks about all of the difficulties that he's gone through after he begins to go out and share the gospel, the grace of God, with the world. And he describes it like this. It sounds extremely painful. He says, we were crushed and overwhelmed and saw how powerless we were to even help ourselves. And then he reframes it. He says, but that was good. Because then we could put everything in the hands of God, 
who alone could save us, and he did help us. So often in our pain, when we come to God in worship, we, we, we put our lives and submit our lives to him. Worship is the act of submitting to God. Whether it be through song or prayer or study or reading or just simply uh, being willing to put all that we're going through in God's hands to be used for our good. He said he alone could save us and he did help us. Maybe today your step is to spend some time worshiping God. God is far bigger than your problem. He's far bigger than your pain. He is capable and able to do so much when we place it in his hands. The reality is when, when it's in God's hands, it's far stronger. He is far stronger and more capable than we are. I'm reminded of when my wife goes to get groceries. Now, it can be tempting when she comes home with groceries for a family of five to want to run. But as the dad, as the dad, I can go out and absolutely fill my arms full of groceries. The amount that my kids are able to carry, they're actually getting bigger these days and not as much of, of the groceries have to wind up in my hands. Sometimes they take it as a badge of honor to carry as much of the groceries as possible. But there were days in the early years where I was merely trying to, we were merely trying to train them to have a servant's heart and to help. And they would carry a bag or two while Laura and I would carry a dozen bags in our hands. The reality is we were capable of more than they were. And so when in our hands, we could do more than they were able to. This is true when it comes to us and God. And the good news that Paul gives us at the end of this verse 8 is that God did help them when they put it in his hands. That one of our constant steps, and, and here's the thing, when we're in pain, it's easy to put it in God's hands and then take it back. And sometimes our act of worship is continually placing it in God's hands. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9, Paul says this, I'm glad, he's talking about the troubles in the church in Corinth, I'm glad, not because it hurt you, but because the pain turned you to God. We can choose to turn to God in our pain. The second decision we can make is to choose to use our pain to grow closer with others in fellowship. Maybe if your pain has come at the hands of other people, you're tempted to push people away. And maybe a piece of what we can do, a choice and a decision we can make, is to try to find some people around us uh, that, that can gather around us and that we can gather with as we live life together and draw closer in relationships. And as I do weddings, one of the things we often talk about, there's a, a practice that often happens at weddings these days. Used to, uh, there would be two candles. They would blow out the outside candle and, and as a unity candle, they would light the center candle to show that they were together. And there's a uh, I've seen all sorts of things done at weddings this way where, you know, maybe they pour sand from, from where one of them grew up and sand from where the other grew up. They pour it in or a collared sand to show the joining of their two lives into one. But probably my favorite is when people choose to use a braided rope. And it's because there are three strands in the rope. And it shows the power of two people united in Christ when braided together, it's nearly unbreakable. And sometimes we're given strength when we choose to lean into some other people. We're strengthened by right relationships. Maybe a step that you can take this week is to find some people around you and choose to consistently be a part of their life and allow them to be a part of your life. One way you can do that here at Bethel is by getting in a small group or a rooted group where you'll be placed with some other people that are living life. Some of them have lived longer than you, maybe younger than you, have different life experiences. 
And yet there's an incredible amount of power in putting a group of people around a table together, putting people together in circles and getting them connected with each other and each other's lives. There's power in sharing your story. You don't have to hurt alone. Galatians 6, 2, Paul is, is explaining, he says, by helping each other with your troubles, you truly obey the law of Christ. That oftentimes it's a decision that we make to live life together with other people, to receive help and to give help. Both are absolutely crucial to real community with other people. And part of that is opening yourself up to some vulnerability. And part of it is getting to know some other people. You might find that there's some shared experience that will help you through your pain. Number three, I can use my pain to grow more like Jesus in discipleship. We can allow our pain to push us away from God and say, well, there's no explanation for my pain yet. My pain hasn't stopped. I'm hurting deeply, so I'm going to move away from the possibility of getting hurt. I'm not going to take this to God. I'm going to hold on to it myself. The reality is that we can choose to be stunted by our pain, or we can choose to grow. God is willing to grow us as we choose to become more like Him. Never are you more like Jesus than when you experience unfair pain in this life. Jesus understood pain. One of our great purposes in life is to become more like Jesus. We were made in God's image, and when we choose to be more like Jesus, we take on the godly characteristics. We can choose to either allow our pain to destroy us or refuse to be destroyed by it and to thrive despite our pain. It would be worthless to just let our pain be meaningless, to go through some abuse or some loss and grief and keep it to ourselves and, and to refuse to allow it to be used for good. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 30, Solomon, King Solomon says, sometimes it takes a painful experience to make us change our ways. The reality is that sometimes our pain can show us the places in our life where we need change. Our pain not, might not be because of our pain, but through our pain and being drawn to Jesus and being drawn toward God and choosing to step in can often allow us to grow into a maturity that we otherwise wouldn't experience. If you find any great tree, you will learn that it, it has developed a great root system over time. That it didn't merely one day grow into the full maturity where it stands with no troubles. There were winds, there were rains, there were storms, there were snows, there were blizzards, and the tree withstood those things and so now it stands more firm than the sapling in the field. Sometimes it takes us a painful experience to make us change our ways. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8 says, even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from the things that he suffered. This is one of the things in scripture that has always amazed me. Jesus was the perfect sinless Son of God, and the brokenness of this world caused him pain too. As a matter of fact, it was the brokenness of this world that led him to the cross where he would lay down his life in an ultimate act of obedience to live out his purpose. You also have a God-given purpose. Even Jesus learned obedience from the things that he suffered. It's one thing to believe what is right or wrong. It's another to choose what is right under the pressure of pain. Hebrews 5, 9 says, Suffering made Jesus perfect, and now he can save forever all who obey him. That it was actually through the pain that Jesus had the ability to save. 
2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 11 says, and now this is Paul talking. He says, and now isn't it wonderful? Paul had been a Pharisee who had had an encounter with God. He had hated the church. He had despised the things that God loved. He had been against Jesus' followers and he had been against the case of Christ. But when he encountered Jesus and he went through some difficulty, it totally transformed his life. And Paul says, now isn't it wonderful all the ways in which this distress, he's talking to the church in Corinth who's gone through all sorts of adversity. He says, isn't it wonderful all the ways this distress has goaded you closer to God? You're more alive. You're more concerned. You're more sensitive. You're more reverent, more human, more passionate, more responsible. Looked at from any angle, you've come out of this with purity of heart. When we take our pain to God, when we choose to grow through our pain, we will experience God in a way that transforms us. Having gone through pain, you will see life in a drastically different way. I was thinking this morning about a message I received on Facebook yesterday from someone who was going through a loss. And it just happened to be that my wife and I experienced a similar loss. And there's never a time when I hear about someone going through that kind of loss that I don't feel like I can, I can reach out of them and tell them they can survive it because I've sur we've survived it. That I could tell them, hey, we, we've been there. It may not be the same thing or the exact thing, but, but that wouldn't have existed 20 years ago because I wouldn't have had the same sensitivity and compassion for the humanity of what they're going through. I wouldn't have had the same passion about helping people through it. <clears throat> I wouldn't have felt any responsibility to walk with anyone else through it had I not gone through it. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18 says, For this reason, Christ, we never become discouraged. Even though our physical being is gradually decaying, yet our spiritual being is being renewed day after day. And this small and temporary trouble we suffer will bring us a tremendous amount, a tremendous and eternal glory, much greater than the trouble. But can I just stop for a minute? When you're in pain, pain calls for all of your attention. I mean, it's hard to be concerned with the needs of others around us when we are so deeply in pain focused on our own pain. What Paul is saying here, when he says it's a small and temporary trouble, don't, don't fool yourself. It doesn't feel small or temporary when you're living in the middle of it. It actually feels huge and even sometimes permanent that this wound and this pain that I'm experiencing is so big and so monumental and, and seems to be unrelenting. On the back side of pain, when we entrust God with pain, on the back side of it, as we experience healing or as we experience God in our pain, we are given perspective that's different. We can remember how we felt in the pain, but we have the, the, the knowledge of how we feel down the road, what we've learned through the pain. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18, eight, verse 18 goes ahead and says, For we fix our attention not on the things that are seen, but on things that are unseen. What can be seen only lasts for a time, but what cannot be seen lasts forever. The reality is the promise that we have through a relationship with Jesus is an eternity where pain will be no more. And because we know that the present pain we're in is not forever, it gives us purpose and hope. Number four, I can use my pain to be more sensitive in serving others. I had a back injury a few years ago that was really severe. And before that, I used to see people and they'd be, oh, my back hurts, my back hurts. I just can't hardly do anything. I can't make it today. My back hurts. And 
I really would just be like, well, sometimes you just have to do hard things until I had a ruptured disc in my own back and I couldn't function. After two to three weeks, I was able to start to get back to doing some things. 18 months later, I had a back surgery and, and, and later the pain was relieved. And even today, if I'm honest, my, my right leg is tighter than my left leg from that. Something that happened to me through that is God allowed me to become more sensitive in, in, in dealing with other people. The reality is I can choose to use my pain for the gain of others. Use your pain to be more sensitive in serving others. Nothing has brought this to light more for me than my own personal battle with anxiety and sometimes depression. I've never felt as misunderstood as I did the first time that I had a major bout of anxiety and depression. Just a sense of hopelessness, a sense of imminent fear all the time, exhausting. When I was younger, I used to hear about mental illness or mental struggles and I would think, oh, you just have to tough through that. But when the pain is so bad that you on your own power cannot stand to move forward, you can choose to use the pain, even the pain you're still in, to be more sensitive in dealing with other people. Once you know pain, you have the capacity to be sensitive to the pain of others. I think we have to be careful in our culture to not look and diminish other people's pain that we don't understand. I think we have to be careful to not try to solve away at everyone else's pain, but we can choose to use our pain to be more sensitive to other people. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse four and six, Paul says that God comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort others. That may actually be what we're going through and the pain that we're going through uh, doesn't have a lot of explanation to it other than it sets us up to be prepared to comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. Friends, the only way we can give the kind of comfort that God gives is to receive the kind of comfort that God gives. Maybe today's a good day to draw into God and the sensitivity of a God who understands your pain, the God who cares about you wherever you are and whatever you're dealing with. Because once we lean in to God's hands and once we lean in to God's healing, once we lean in to his compassion for us, it will open us up to be far more compassionate with others. Paul goes on to say, for the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. Even when we are weighted down with troubles, it is for your comfort and your salvation. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can patiently endure the same things we suffer. Isn't there something healing about hearing from someone who's gone through what you're going through, who lets you know they can get through where you're going to. Number five, we can use our pain to witness to the world. The reality is that when we're in obvious pain, when we're going through something, our world is watching and maybe it's the small world around you in your home and maybe it's in your workplace and maybe it's in your community. We often like to hide our pain. It's just something to do with the herd mentality that we have as people. Animals who are wounded often hide that they're in pain so long that the illness within them grows until it's threatening their very life. Whereas if they could make themselves vulnerable to the shepherd or the one who can heal, they can experience healing and be a testament to the God who meets us in our pain. Philippians chapter 1 verse 12 says, And I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, 
that everything that has happened to me here has helped spread the good news. Paul has been imprisoned. He's been mistreated. He's had his own friends turn against him. He even talks about this thing within him that he's asked God to take away that God doesn't seem to remove. And because he's gone through this, he's able to speak to the church, the early church of people who are experiencing persecution and trouble and struggle and earthly strife and say to them, I so want you to know. Why does Paul want them to know? Because Paul has experienced something first and he has the ability to walk with them. He says, I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. We can choose to share the good news through our struggles. Sometimes we want to share that we're all the way healed or all the way better or that the pain doesn't bother us. And people ask us about the painful moment. Hey, how are you doing? And we so want to say, I'm doing well. When in reality, what we need to say is, hey, it's still a daily battle, but I'm finding God in it. And I continue to trust in God, even though I'm in the pain. 2 Corinthians 6, 4 says, in everything we do, we try to show that we are true ministers of God. We patiently endure suffering and hardship and trouble of every kind. I would encourage you today to look on the notes on the Bethel Church app to begin to ask which one of these steps do I need to take next in relation to the pain I've gone through or I'm right in the middle of and how can my pain be for gain? Friend, I promise when you make these choices, the only variable in this equation is not whether or not God will show up in your pain. It's not whether or not God will grow you or not whether or not God will reveal himself to you. Not whether or not, it, it, the real question is will we show up for a real encounter with God despite our pain? God has no problem showing up to broken situations that seem to have no explanation. God has no problem in using that which was meant for evil for our good. While there are many things God can do in our pain, there are some steps that we can take. What is your step this week? I love you, Bethel. Have a great week. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Are you ready to take your next step? We would love to hear from you. You can send an email to hello at Bethel.us. You can send us a message on Facebook, or you can let us know in the Bethel app. And speaking of the Bethel app, Take a moment, if you haven't already, to go to your app store and search Bethel Putco to download our app. There's all kinds of great resources in the app. You can listen to messages, you can view the messages from Sunday morning, and you can also fill out a digital connect card. You can do that today and each week to let us know that you're tuning in. You can also find some great information about our Bethel Kids Ministry and our Be The One Student Ministries. Also in the app, you can give. It's one of three ways you can give with online giving at Bethel.us slash give in our app, Bethel Putco, or through text. Hey, thanks again for joining us. We hope you have a great day and know that you are loved.